what to ex yeah that's what I for 24 yeah right yeah 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 <laughs> Right. Go to Warren 24 or, yeah. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, or yeah, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11. The Bible says, uh, now faith, verse, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things, that, uh, the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith... It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Heavenly Father, bless this uh, very impromptu, very raw um, conversation, uh, uh, message tonight. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, for quite some time now, I have been um, the, on a journey of being the pastor of Three Rivers Baptist Church. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, coasting because we didn't necessarily think there was a door open. <laughs> we didn't think, we, we were undecided. And folks, I'm telling you with fervency, not that I'm mad, that I go to the Bible for everything. And what was brought to my mind when I felt like God was nowhere to be found, I remembered Job. You say, what about Job? Job, and, and this is paraphrasing, this is not verbatim, he said, I looked before me, I couldn't find God. I looked behind me, I couldn't find God. I looked to the right hand, I could, or left hand, I could not perceive him. I looked to the right hand, I could not find him. I looked everywhere for God, and I couldn't find him. But this thing I know, Job said, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Though God is not felt, doesn't mean he's gone. There's confidence. Listen, there is a quiet confidence when you can't find God. And I don't mean you're backslidden away from God, but I mean you're a, a trying Christian. You may be a tripping Christian, but you're a trying Christian. And you say, man, I'm, I'm struggling. 1 Peter 5, 7, God knows it. We just sang it this morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. He cares about us. And yet, though I, I tread a dark some path, yield sunshine all the way. There's a promise in the Bible that says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Okay, you don't have to convince G G uh, Jake Jackson that God is. I believe that God is. But he says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I can tell you over the last several years, I have been diligently seeking Jesus. I have come into this auditorium and, and been angry at God. Yo, God. You say, don't speak to him like that. Let me tell you something. It is an incredible privilege to be able to go before the presence of God Almighty, the creator of the world's the creator of all there is, and yet I, little lowly old Jake Jackson, can go before him and misspeak. And yet he understands. God is long-suffering. 
but I have been diligently seeking God's will. God, what would you have me to do? God, what would you have me to do? Oh, Heavenly Father, what would you have me to do? Uh, I, I felt like I've just, you, you get lost in the woods and you go, well, wait a second. I remember that tree. <laughs> I've been here before. And you feel like you're going in circles. God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. I won't leave thee. I won't forsake thee. I won't leave thee nor forsake thee. So, okay, that's, that's, that's a, God said it. His word, he magnifies his word above his name. And he said, I'll not leave thee nor forsake thee. So I know God is with me. Yea, yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So here I am, the journey of Jake Jackson. We're going to talk a lot about me tonight, all right? Us. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, because what is this all about? Is this just about keeping Three Rivers Baptist Church alive for the sake of pride? No. Is it, is it about um, carrying on tradition for the sake of tradition? No. You have a pastor who is chomping at the bit, who's hungry, who desires to see what God promised. You know, so many times in the past when Three Rivers Baptist Church was trickling down, I preached faith, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. By the, by the skin of your teeth, by the tips of your fingernails, you hold on to faith. When you're running out of rope, tie a knot at the bottom and hold on. Hold on, because he says, I am a rewarder of them that diligently seek me. I've been seeking the Lord diligently. As best that you may be, did you know you may be a more diligent seeker than I might be? But your capacity might be different than mine. You may be able to, like if you, Lucas and I are digging a hole, I guarantee you I'm digging a deeper hole. I'm doing it faster. I'm doing more at a time. But if Lucas is still digging a hole, he's giving it all he's got. That's his capacity. God didn't say, be as diligent. Jake, I want you to be as diligent as Jack Hiles. I don't, I don't know how diligent that guy was. That guy was insanely diligent. I would love, I aspire to be diligent like that. Schedule and time and work and ethic and work and work and work. Brother Hiles had a, 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 his, his big thing, of course, was, was um, a, a work. Work. You know, I preached this morning, I mentioned, I said, um, uh, are you willing to pray whatever it takes? Okay, we're asking God, God, do whatever you have to do. God's saying, I will, as long as you do whatever you have to do. Scripture says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. God, do whatever it takes. God says, well, are you doing whatever it takes? Are you desperate to do whatever it takes? You're so desperate, you want me to take drastic measures? Well, are you so desperate that you'll take drastic measures? Folks, oh man, I wish we weren't even recording this. But I can tell you as a man, I have felt like less of a man because some of the situations that I've found myself in for the cause of Christ. Folks, I haven't been imprisoned I haven't been abused or persecuted or anything like that, but I have found myself in, at times, financial poverty. I've had, I've had family members send me messages on Facebook saying, listen, and this, was when my, this is when I first started standing in for my dad, and we still had the school and different things like that. I didn't get it. I, I didn't have a job. I was searching couch cushions for change. You know, God, all, Brother Pip said it this morning, God always provided the need. Now, I can tell you, I've had my lights shut off before. I've had my water shut off before. And I felt this big as a husband, as a provider, as a father, going to God and going, God, what is the deal? I'm, I'm, I didn't, I'm not working because I don't know when I'm going to be able to, when my dad's going to be there, when he's not. I've had, I had family members who are um, extended family members. Just, just get a job, stop being a bum. Huh. Listen, let me tell you something, snaggletooth. Come on over here. Let me explain something to you. <gasps> let me pull back the curtain. And he went, 
Jake, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was in a rock and a hard place. I've had to search the couch cushions before because I was following the Lord. I've had to borrow money. It's embarrassing because I was following the Lord. Follow the Lord, follow the Lord, follow the Lord. Our plans are a straight line to our goal. God's plan is like an obstacle course. Yo, you want to reach these? Diligently seek me. Diligently seek me. And I use this, this hall of faith chapter. But without faith, I have it. I have it. I live in a church building. And we're going to address that in just a minute. People have been a blessing to me. Uh, so many people in this room have been a huge blessing to my family. Folks, I'm not in search for riches. I'm not in search for wealth. I'm not in search for any of that. I'm in search of a position to where I can wake up every morning and go tell people about Jesus. Listen, I love my, I, I don't say I love my job because I hate being away, but I work for a stellar company. Tipman International, Polar King International, stellar, I'm not kidding. You say, this is broken. Boom, it's done. I'm, t I'm not kidding. It's done. Uh, they're so on it. There's no delay. There's no procrastination. The job gets done immediately. I pulled up with my oversized load. Boss was out there with his uh, uh, low boy trailer turning around deck to deck, drove it off, chained it down. Why procrastinate? Don't put it off till Monday. Let's do it now. Don't play around. Hey, my, this button's broken. Done. I work for a... Do we send you out into the, into our, the United States of America? You're prepared for whatever comes your way. It's a great company. But I would walk away like that when the Lord opens the door. I've thought so many times, Lord, why can't I have a normal life where I, where I work and have a 401k and a pension and um, uh, a retirement and I'm able to kind of plan my life and do all these things? That may not be the plan God has for me. It may not be. Now, I want to get into a couple of things. I don't know the future, and neither do you. But if we honor God, the way that we honor God is by, I guess you could say, preparing or planning. I go to God, and I, and, and, and I say, God, if you don't lay out a plan before me, if you're not taking me up to Mount Sinai and chiseling out the plan in stone, then I'm making a plan as best that I know how, and I'm moving forward. You've got to direct it. You have to direct it. So no, we don't know the future, but we know who holds the future, right? Um, how many of you remember, Miss Jennifer, of course you do, Miss Carter, and so many others, we, you, helped me, you helped Jamie and I clean out the upstairs. There was 20 years worth of, <laughs> worth of stuff up there. Some of you haven't been up to the third floor in ever. I don't think Dr. Harrington went up there one time since we, since we were in this building. She's like, hang those stairs. <laughs> By the way, um, I was going through New York, uh, and uh, I, I dipped down on 86, and it takes you to Binghamton which is 23 miles away from Montrose, where she lives, Montrose, Pennsylvania. And we tried to link up, but she had a doctor's appointment and whatnot. And, um, but I was able to call her, and she always says, tell everyone I love them, and don't let anyone take my seat. You know, she, she said, every, every Sunday morning and every Wednesday, I'm there on the third pew. I said, you know what? What we want to do is get a picture and do a cardboard cutout and place her there, uh, you know, with that look of, astuteness. Uh, uh, but I was able to talk to her and, and, um, uh, uh, and whatnot. But you all helped clean out the upstairs because you know what the plan was? The plan was is that we were going to move upstairs. But then we found out that the upstairs was going to take uh, a wheelbarrow full of money of plumbing and electrical and different things like that to get us in there. Plus, I'd like to get a contractor and find out, can we zone this? Because the, the reason was I wanted to go full time. We're going to move in. I'm a, I'll get rid of my car, and I'm going to move in. But we're going to move upstairs. There's lots of room. It's third floor. It's secluded. I don't have to worry about anything. Nobody's got to worry about us. It's detached almost to where you don't even think about it. Um, but like I said, the plumbing, the electrical, they're cost prohibitive. Um, and uh, we looked into it. I've had several people come in and go, okay, you know, you can tap into the plumbing here. 
or you can tap into the plumbing here, but that's big bucks. You know, that, that's, that's some money. So what happened was, is long story short, we had to move. We had to move now. We went downtown to see if we could bid on the place that we were staying, and it was astronomical what they, what they paid for. So I knew that wasn't God just closing the door. That was God going, wow, and slamming it closed. Uh, so we had to do a quick move, and things changed, and we're downstairs. Um, it's not ideal, but uh, I thank God. Uh, we have a roof over our head. Um, I, we take money out of what I, out of what I get paid. I want to pay my share, uh, pl- uh, for water and electric. Um, I, I, I try to do that, but what we need to do, what I'd like to do, because my goal still, I haven't given up on that, on that goal. My goal is to be full time. And I believe I talked to, uh, brother Bob Gray senior. I talked to Alan Domley. I've talked to Robin Smith. I've talked to pastor Jackson. I've talked to you fellas here. The ideal situation is to be full-time. We want a pastor that wakes up every day and goes and makes visits and goes soul winning. And we know that at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or maybe 10 or 11 a.m. when he gets up, he, uh, <laughs> gotcha. he come, he's praying for me. I've got a hospital vet or, or I'm going in for surgery. Brother Jackson's going to be there. He's going to pray for us before we go into surgery. I have, there's a tragedy in the family. Brother Jackson's going to be there. The pastor's going to be there. Uh, you call 911, paramedics show up, fire department shows up, police show up. Why? Because they're doing their job. And, and listen, I've had a vote of confidence. People have told me, hey, I know guys who, who, work, who work full-time and, and pastor a church. Great, if that's what works for them. But I know in my heart, Three Rivers Baptist Church needs a full-time pastor. Full time. Converts walking the aisle. Baptismal waters getting stirred. It's, it's, it's what has to happen. It's, so anyway, um, I'd still like to make that happen. I'm not pitching. I'm not pitching and asking for money. What I'm saying is, is I've got a little bit of a plan. Uh, and, and the plan is, is uh, it's coming along. So number one, I don't, I don't know the future. Number two, uh, uh, we're, uh, we were going upstairs. That's still the plan. We're not staying downstairs. We have, um, we went and looked at a house, Jamie and I did. Um, it's in our budget. And I thank God that I can go, wow, that's, that's in my budget. But I will gladly turn it away and I will do whatever it takes. God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And we looked at that house and it had great property. And I went, I'm just, it doesn't feel right. It's just, that gut, I call it the Holy Spirit gut. It's just, it, it's just not right. You know, just because something's pretty, something's valuable, something's wonderful, something's situationally great, if it doesn't have the Lord's blessing on it, avoid it. When Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil took him up to tempt him, he showed him property. He showed him wealth. He showed him kingdoms. Jesus said, get behind me. Get behind me. Um... Uh, so number one was, is, uh, we don't know the future, but we're working on it. God, I think God honors preparedness or planning. Um, uh, we're going upstairs. Uh, we were going upstairs, and that's still the goal. Uh, but number three was plumbing and electrical. It was, man, the cost to get there. You have a pastor who's working on becoming full-time. I promise you, you're going to see growth. Number four is... is um, uh, we, we have to, I want to do it right. I don't want to do this cloak and dagger, smoke and mirrors, let's hide from contractors, let's, let's hide from, the, all you're doing is bringing trouble. If we do things right, we sleep with confidence. If you do things right, and that's what I'd like to do, I'd like to call a contractor, get a contractor in here to see if we can pull permits to have it done. And by the way, I think if we do that, it, which leads me to my next point, If we do a legal apartment, living quarters, we add value to this building. You add add living quarters to the building, a parsonage, if we pull permits and do it right, have it rezoned, that adds value. I believe in my heart. I I believe in the future, I don't know when, we're going to have a fourth location. We had Fernhill, we had Clinton, we had here. 
I think we're going to have another place. And I love this place. I was saved here. I was married here. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to keep it and make it my house. Uh, <laughs> Jamie said, nah, uh yes. Are you kidding me? This is my bedroom. No, I, uh, uh <laughs> but uh, uh, we add value. Man, value is added to that. So my next point is this. It leads me to my next point. So if God moves us, our church, or if uh, we sell or we move, we um, regroup and recoup some of the value that's in this building, we have an investment in it. And people go through the building, oh, this is nice. This is Mr. Garrido came into the building. He goes, wow, I was not expecting this. And then he treks himself upstairs. By the way, I don't know if he's doing it anymore. He's like, I'm looking for somebody to replace me. Um, uh, he goes, and you find a full living quarters, and, and it's done right. It's done right. So here's, here's my pitch. Um, rent is astronomical right now, especially for a family like mine. Seven people. Uh, we were looking for uh, a minimum of three bedroom, one bath. Minimum. Um, uh, uh, we would like two bath, but then, or in four bedroom, but phew, that goes up like to 2,200 a month. So we were looking any, I want anything under 1500. That's, and that's, that's cap 1501. No 1500, no more. So we found one at 1400, uh, great property and whatnot. But like I said, I, I didn't feel right about what if I took that rent money and put, shoot it away, put it, socked it away, so to speak. And I was able to take that rent money that I've built up over six months and put into the upstairs and have it renovated. Now, I, I do, not, I do my, not mind doing that. But what that's going to take is, is a six-month plan to be able to say, Polar King, I'm giving you six months. Through his Baptist church, in six months, you're going to have a full-time pastor. And say, um, well, in six months... It might be a little longer. Here's the reason why. Because, hey, I built up the money. Okay, now the money needs to be spent and implicated. It's going to take time to do all that. So I think to maybe keep working while that's being done, and then once it's all done, done I'm done, and we, we move upstairs, uh, and it's all done legally, and then we, wait, we all wake up one Monday morning and go, we have a full-time pastor. We have a full-time pastor, but here's the, here's, there is a catch because I'm, I'm being totally transparent here. I might, there's a brother in Christ who has a trucking company, and I might be able to pick up side work from him because, folks, I still have to buy groceries. Uh, I still have to have some sort of income, but I would drive mostly at night is the, is the condition. Um, maybe some days, but mostly at night. That way I can pay my car insurance, um, we can have Christmas and different things like that, but you're going to have a 90% pastor. And over time, when visitors turn into members and tithes and offerings begin to grow, you'll have a full-time pastor. Um, but right now, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a 50-50. Um, so if God moves us, and I take that money, uh, and so we have an investment, and we can sell the building and whatnot. But here's, a, here's one of the pros. Uh, I'm on site. I'm on site. I've always worried about security for the building. You know, security, security, secu a security system for the building is thousands of dollars. Uh, but all you need is uh, Jake Jackson and uh, a New Testament, and I can cast out the demons. Uh, uh, New Testament, uh, I call my New Testament AK-47. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> but I'm on site. I'm here. Uh, and what that means to me is not only safety and security for the building, but I get to walk these halls. I get to start praying for the bus kids. I get to pray over primary church and a, a future junior church. I get to hit this altar and shed some tears. I'm on site. Um, that feels, I believe, I, I, not just feels, but I believe through faith I'm doing the right thing. I'm aspiring to do the right thing. Now, what I want to do is I want to ask you, what do you think? 
Does anybody have any input? Does anybody have any say, Brother Jackson? Yeah. Well, it'd go all the way up. It'd all go there. Yeah. No, yeah, but guaranteed work. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. Well, I, I have. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that would increase the building by thirty thousand dollars, twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. And if we move north and this building could sell for two fifty, yeah. And all of a sudden it's two forty. Yep. So the the money would be recouped right. of what we put into it. Right. And it's really your money in it. We're giving it to you in advance. So right. Well, it's one hand washing the other. You and Jamie would be doing us this service, a great service. I think your uh, I think your heart is in the right place. I, I don't even use that. Well, I think, I think your heart is exactly the way God wants it, and I'm I'm we're pleased. I guarantee you, I can speak for everybody. We are we're really amazed. I wish we had two or three acres and, and four bedrooms and two baths. Sure. Well, do you remember, listen, let me, before, I, before anybody else wants to say anything, um, uh, I will say, first off, if I, if, I, if I have to go get a place, that means I have to keep, my, that means I have to keep driving a truck. Yeah. Which, uh, Curtis Hudson's testimony, he was a mail carrier, mailman. And I love his testimony. I was like, man, that's what I want to do. Took his uniform in, took his bag in, and said, and with tears in his eyes because he loved his job. He was surrounded by good people, and he said, with tears in his eyes, God's called me to preach, and I'm just, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, man, that is, that's faith. And here, and here it is, and I, I don't know if they'll ever see it or not, but Polar King, man, they're loading me up with gear, shirts and coats and coveralls and all, all kinds of stuff. The other night, uh, I don't know where I was, some, oh, Massachusetts. It was cold. I had a quarter of a tank. I didn't want to leave my truck running all night because 86 in New York, there's very rare to find a truck stop. Um, so I wanted to conserve fuel. So I put on my bib overalls and my coat, and I was sweating. It was like 28 degrees. They give quality stuff. But to be able to take that stuff and turn it in, now I don't want to. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? Oh, there's a reluctancy. But to be able to turn that in and say, I mean, I'm the pastor of a church and they need me. More than I need money, more than I need this job, and they need me. I, I, I'm, I'm a respectable, hardworking, good employee. Yeah. Anybody would be lucky to have me as an employee. Yeah. There's my pitch um, for LinkedIn. Uh, uh, <laughs> but um, the way this started was this years ago, s several years ago. And I, I, I called my dad and I said, Dad, I don't. I kind of don't want to say this because it's. I feel like it's an intrusion. I said, but what do you think about 
if we were to parsonage out the church and live in the church? And he said on the phone, he, he almost finished my words. He's like, that's exactly what I was thinking. I did it through a lot of prayer. You know what the last thing I want to do? I don't want to live in a church. I want a house on a ranch with three acres. Add a zero behind that three, 30 acres. <laughs> I want a creek. I want four wheelers. I want dirt bikes. Um, I, want a, I want a huge yard, four bedroom. I want a wraparound porch. I want a fountain in the middle of my driveway. <laughs> I, want, I want to be dripping in ice like Brother Forte used to be when he, hey, you all remember Brother Forte? He's always coming in with his, his, his cane, driving his BMW, and the man was iced out, you know, platinum, you know? Um, uh, and and I, don't, I don't really want that. But um, the house stuff, I do. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I think about that, and I called my dad that, that evening or that day, and I was sitting in the parking lot through much prayer and going, Dad, what do you think about this? Counsel. He went, but that's ex- I, was, I was going to tell you that. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know how that would go. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that, you know. But what I love about this church is I think y'all want what I want. Y'all want what I want. And I believe this church is willing to do almost, almost anything to make that happen. And the scripture says that he is a rewarder. We all believe that God is, amen, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When I was moving into the church, you know, Brother Alex told me, he goes, I'm kind of jealous. Not in a bad way, not in a covetous way, but man, I'm kind of jealous. He's like, you're at church. He's like, you can pray. You're right here, man. Like this, you're in the foxhole. You're in the front line. He's like, this is cool. I'm like, all right, it's kind of cool. Here I am walking around going, man, I live in the church. And Alex is like, dude, this is cool. Give me a bedroom, you know? Uh, you know, I'll live here too. Uh, put it in the bell tower. He can be um, the hunchback of Three Rivers Baptist Church. Uh, <laughs> ring the bell for us. Um, uh, by the way, that bell is as old as... as Almost that stone, that cornerstone that's out there, uh, 1897 or something like that. The bell tower is really cool. I want to preserve it. But I know I didn't get into a lot of preachy preachy, but I want to reveal your, my heart and tell you I'm trying. And there is a spiritual battle on a daily basis where I get in that truck and I say, okay, it's one, I'm one step closer. Whatever it may be, I'm one step closer to getting full time. Um, I'm looking for anybody else. I thought somebody else raised their hand. Any input? Uh, oh, let's go with Miss uh, Kathy first. Much more. Absolutely. Um, the layout is much more conducive. Um, there's there's natural light up there, which is a, a coveted. Do what? Through the ceiling? No. The the, the you know the biggest thing. <laughs> natural skylight. Uh, we collect rainwater. You know, <laughs> that was good, man. Uh, but you know what we have is we have, I believe a a a master. Not necessarily a contractor, but there's a guy here who kind of knows how to do anything. And he's sitting right back there. Uh, and I believe he's a godsend, not just so we can use him, um, but that he can be used for the ministry. Uh, he is a born-again Christian. His name was Angel, what is it, Dominguez? Angel Dominguez, who's already been a huge blessing. He's been a huge blessing. I love Brother Angel. Um, but uh, the, the biggest thing upstairs is the... Um, uh, the, the tuck point around the windows in my study. Uh, those need, that's point blank, that's got to get done. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of water that comes in. Huh? Showers of blessings. Uh, you know, I don't look at these things and, and complain about them. I look at the obstacle and go, okay, how do we overcome it? God, this is your building. You called me, Lord. You know, I don't think God minds being called to the carpet because he always 
always shows up and produces. Always. The eyes of the Lord run through the whole world, run to and fro about the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. I'm not a perfect person, but my heart is diligently seeking him. Anything and everything I can do. Anything and everything that I can do. Brother Pip, what was your... Yes, sir. And knowing that the situation with the house. Yes, sir. We already talked about how final targeting or putting some kind of house here on the property to get in the church or on the property for your family. Yeah. So now that you're talking about this, I feel this is God's way of reminding us to say hey, it's time. Let's do this. Yeah. That's that's good. It's I'm with you. Amen. Thank you. Oh. What? Oh, no, yeah, well, you know, um, working from home, that's not, a bad, that's not a bad idea. We live in a time where you can make money working from home. If God opens a door, if something happens to that, I'm all for it. But my focus can't be, I can't go, oh, I want to serve God so bad, but I have to pay these bills. Bills are important. You got to pay your bills. But I trust God. What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Touch not God's anointed. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I'm I'm gonna be real serious here. Um, Bible teaches that you're supposed to take care of the man of God, but I'm I feel like no, I no, no, no. I'm. Are you humble? If you say you're humble, <laughs> uh, I feel I feel like I'm just a I'm a regular blue collar. I'm just like anybody else. I'm not any better. I don't deserve any better. I, I, I don't. But I have seen it over the years how Pastor Jackson poured out his heart and people have poured out their love and hate comes with it. They did, it happened to Jesus too. But when you stand for God and you have a position of godly authority, God says, I'm going to honor you through the people. And you'll do it. You'll, you, some of you, you're going to honor me, you're, and you already have. You're going to honor me and love me and help me. And, and the Hoffman's seniors came into town, saw the bald tires on my car, and went, hey, go buy some tires. Not brand new, but I didn't need brand new. It would be, it would be ridiculous to put $1,500 on my jalopy out there, which God bless my jalopy. It's a pretty jalopy. Uh, it's got rust, and Jamie busted, ran into a tree, and my father-in-law backed into the bumper. And But bless God, it runs. I changed the oil, put fuel in it, take care of it mechanically. It's got a Cadillac 6.0 in it. It's a solid vehicle. I thank God for it. So I am not a pastor or a preacher who's going, well, care for me, care for me, care for me. I'm going, I want to care for what you want. God will supply all our need according to his riches and glory. And we've got to step out in faith. If we read the rest of this chapter, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. It says it right here in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. I can't please God if I'm not living by faith. All I am is I rely on my money, and yet I know some spiritual lingo and get up on Sunday and preach it. Man, living by faith, it's exciting. It's exciting. If you have the right mental state, living for God, even in the hard times, you go, this is, this is exciting. Because one day we'll be through this and we'll look back on it and go, hey, son, hey, daughter, hey, church member, hey, fellow Christian, you're going to get through it. Here's how I got through it. Joe, uh, um, um, Tom Vogel. 18 years old, walking into the jungles of Vietnam. 
Another guy walking out. Tom Vogel grabbed him by the arm and said, how did you survive? How did you get out of the jungle? You know what the guy told him? Dig in every night. Dig in every night. Dig in. You know how you survive? You know how you survive? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And if I'll follow this, and you'll follow this, and we'll all follow this together, I'm telling you, Three Years Baptist Church isn't done. <laughs> We're not done. God did a purging. God did cleansing. God, and he's still not done. God still, we're not, when he's tried us, we'll come forth as gold. This has been a tried church. We've been tried. You raising your hand? Or are you doing just finger exercises? What's up? Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's that's very true. Um, I've I've thought that, uh, um, but to be honest with you, I'm kind of a novice at. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I timidly put my toe in the water because I don't know. Technically, your name is still on pay, all the paperwork because uh, when we got this building, you were the one who started all. So unless we do a, ma a mountain of paperwork to transfer everything, everything would have, the loan and the deed would have to be done through Doug Jackson for Three Rivers Baptist Church. So you would have to be the guy who signed the paperwork. Right, right, right. But where, because again, you know, 20 years now, 30 years now, the church is banned. I mean, the, the, the war out there is that, well, we're going to sell everything to give you the churches of black faith. No, I don't believe in that. Because I don't know churches of black faith like TRBC. Right. Now, if you take the missionaries. Sure. I'm all for John Burke and J.C. Lincoln and uh, they go on, you know. Yeah, yep. That, 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 I'm just out of that. Yeah, ball. throw that away. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We have all that. I did all that. Fire extinguishers, smoke detectors. I did all that. I put in, we put in several hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, those things can be done, yeah. Plumbing and electric. Plumbing and electric, contracted. Solid. Okay. Um, so here it is. Let's, 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 this was more of a, here's your pastor. What's he doing? Well, he's in a place where, um, as a man, man, I'm comfortable. 
Polar King's a great company. I'm feeding my family. If I was not a pastor and just a layman in the church, I'd be living in high cotton, so to speak. I'd be, I mean, this is great. I would be able to invest even further. I'd be like, you know what? Send me to Washington State. Send me to Oregon because I can make big money doing that, relatively speaking. I can make in a week what some people make in a month if I was able to give my heart and soul to truck driving. And man, the open road's great. Truck driving's hard, it's scary, it's high stress, but sometimes you get a perfect day where the sun's hitting just right, the sky's a perfect blue, uh, traffic is, is spread out evenly, and everybody's just enjoying the day, and man, just cruising down the road, listening to the Bee Gees, no, listen. <laughs> listening to Hiles Anderson or Alvin Martinez or uh, uh, just some good music or preaching or even whatever you're, or just thinking. It's a perfect day. You got your shades on and just, man, this is great. But it's not as great as, hey, my name is Brother Jake Jackson and or I'm, my name is Jake Jackson. This is my son, Lucas. Uh, we're from Three Rivers Baptist Church because that lasts for eternity. That's frontline work. And I'm a frontline kind of guy. Um, I believe all this time, God has been preparing me and preparing us. I don't care what's on the news. I don't care that preachers are preaching end time messages all the time. We're not supposed to be so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly good. Keep our eyes on the skies, sure. Set your affections on things above, yes. But if every one would reach one, man, you watch and see. You know what I want is I, I would love, and I, I'm probably getting off track here because I'm, I want to make a point, Dr. and Mrs. Pohazi to be in the AM service as much as they could be. They've missed like 50 years worth of AM services. Backsliders. Uh, they may, <laughs> And Dr. Pohazi says, man, I'll come in on a Sunday night or a Wednesday, and there's new people there. And I'm like, who's that? Who's that? Who's that person? And I went, in my heart, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, that makes sense. But at the same time, I'm like, he probably hasn't been saying, able to say that lately. The pastor's got to be worth his pay by putting people on the pews and stirring that water. And not just my pay, but the commands from Almighty God, that's a huge responsibility, and I'm up for undertaking it. I'm up for it. I'm up for the challenge. I want to punch the devil in the face. I want to spit in his eye and dance on his grave when God casts him into hell. But I want to be practicing right now. Oh, I'm sure the demons that own this area are like, oh, yeah? Hey, man. We did it before. We did it before, didn't we? Through the power of Almighty God, we can do it again. We can do it again. Brother Shelton Smith, he wrote a, a book called Do It Again, Lord. Do It Again, Lord. I haven't read the whole thing uh, yet. I get like halfway through a book and then I start another one. That's a bad problem. I've got to finish the books, you know. Uh, but do it again, Lord. Do it again. Do what again? Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive me again. Revive me. Oh God, do something in me again. And he is. God is doing something. Stay around long enough to go. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, the Bible in action. What a cool thing that is, because I'm telling you, Psalm chapter one says it. Joshua says it. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. Everybody else can go about and do what they want, but anybody under my tier, under my reign, we're gonna serve the Lord. And as long as Jake Jackson's the pastor of Three Years Baptist Church, we're gonna find the right path. We're gonna stay on the right path. We're not gonna remove the ancient landmarks. We're gonna do what's right. I have a fuse that's miles long. Miles long. I'm a patient man. I'm a kind man. 
I'm a compassionate man, and I usually let people walk on me with however they want. But bless God, if, you, if I've learned how to use the Bible, we don't combat evil with evil. We combat evil with good. And as long as pa- Jake Jackson's a pastor of Three Years Baptist Church, we're going to walk the old paths. We're going to do what's right. Come hell or high water, we're going to do what's right. The best way that we know how, principally, uh, ethically, doctrinally, uh, I'm, I'm a guy who says, um, I may not know this area, but I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it. Uh, and there's all kinds of neat things. I, I, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it because I think it's going to come in use one day. If the Lord tarries, my, my cousin, Adam, he uh, was in the army. He's a police, a police officer, um, a good guy. Adam's a salt of the earth guy. Uh, just lost his mom, his mom, which was my mom's sister, uh, not long ago. Um, good guy, but he's he's got his pilot's license, has his own plane. He's studying for a commercial. I've wanted my pilot's license for years because I've wanted to pass away like Brother Lester Roloff. <laughs> uh, Brother Roloff, I'm I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, but I was talking with Jesse was in town, and we were talking, and she said. You're studying to get your pilot's license? I said, yeah. She said, so am I. I said, no way. And she said, I want to do missions trips. I went, oh, I just wanted to get on my vacation plans faster. <laughs> I just want to get in my little plane, me and Jamie, Jamie and I, and fly somewhere, you know, and be like, all right, vacation fast. And she would look at me, you know, and she's like, oh, but missions trips. Now, I'm not flying across large bodies of water. I'm not doing that. Not happening. Uh, but... Um, uh, I, I'd like I'd like to study to do that. I would like to I would like to do that uh, to visit the skies. Amen. Um, but there are several things that I'm aspiring to do. But above all of them is to be a good husband, a good father, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, an anointed pastor. Anybody can carry a title and do the song and dance. I don't want to do that. I want the power from on high. I want to do it right. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking to be invited to the Sword of the Lord conference one day or uh, pastor schools or, uh, or whatever. They're, I'm not looking for that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't desire that. Not that I am anti that. But I, John Knox, God, give me Scotland lest I die. Hey, God, give me Fort Wayne lest I die. Give me Fort Wayne. Oh, God, give me Fort Wayne. Um, so... If you have any concerns or you have any objections and you did not want to say them out loud, please come see me so we can talk about it, work it out. But what we need to do now, because what I feel is, is mostly everybody's on board. That was the initial plan before. And then we ran into a roadblock. I would never deceive anyone. I would never say, this is what we're going to do. And then let you believe that and go do something different on purpose. I would never lead to deceive. If something happened that kept us away from the plan, then I did not communicate it. That's my fault. Uh, however, I feel like everybody's on board. So what I need, what we need to do is we have a couple of ideas. We need to pursue those plans. But the thing is, is I'm going to need help pursuing those plans because I'm in a truck. Tomorrow I leave for Corpus Christi, Texas. There's not a lot I can do behind the wheel of a truck besides phone calls. It's hard to write things down while I'm driving. I don't suggest that. I can get big tickets for, for, for that. It's called distracted driving. I'm, I'm not supposed to do that. I am a good driver. Next time we drive, you're riding with me, Pastor Jackson. Um, he's got Indy 500 in his blood. You, you taught me to drive. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Uh, uh, but So I'm going to need help. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need somebody to pursue after these things and say what can we do how can we do it where are we doing it what do you need and and to get it done I'm gonna need help so if we want to move along with this plan I'm all for it but folks we can't do it if we're not gonna do it by faith we can't do it if you don't believe that if you don't believe in me because I believe in God you've got to be able to have confidence to say our pastor believes in God. Our pastor is living by faith. Our pastor's doing the best that he knows how. 
and we trust that God is going to guide our pastor to the right things and do the right. You don't have a foolish pastor. I'm not around around doing a bunch of stupid stuff. My feet aren't swift and run to mischief. I don't watch filth on television. I don't listen to filthy music. I don't speak ill. I pray for people. I'm a, I'm a godly man. Now, I'm not perfect, but God has called me to this, and you're here as members. I don't know how to close. I'm having a hard time landing the plane. <laughs> uh, uh, Miss, Miss Van Zolen. Yeah. Third floor? No, not at all. Okay. Is this one of your friends or your kid at all? Not at all. Okay. Not one not one bit. Uh, it's the thing about it is it's incredible how the third floor is part of the building, but it feels secluded, separated. Um, the way that we'd be able to block it off, um, I know that it would give us it would give us some peace. I feel like there's more room for storage opportunity in the attic, which right now, all stuff is everywhere. You know, it's, we're still not, we're moved in. We've got a place to sleep and sit down and have dinner and whatnot, but it's not, we're not still, there's no room. There's no closets, you know, it's not home. It's not home. And I feel like upstairs has the potential for us to be able to dress it up and make it home. And I feel like there are so many pros, building value, um, uh, the convenience of being on site. Um, there's just so many, I think there's too many pros for, for us to, to just say no. It's worth exploring. Uh, Brother Van Zulen. How many bedrooms do you think you would set up? Just two. The rooms are big enough for we just need two. Um, how we would lay that out, that is where, because what I would like to use as a bedroom is right where um, the men's bathrooms are, where the plumbing is. So ah, I would like for that maybe to be the, ba the bathroom. We would figure it out. Not quite sure how we would do it. Um, it would take some, some planning. But just, we would just need two bedrooms. Uh, Brother Jackson. Right. So if we have a school that counted as close to 30, well, that's a whole bunch of people coming to church. Yeah. And that's yep. where Growth. the finances come, and that's where the idea of possibly moving. And that's where my four bedroom, three bath, 30 acres comes in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be in heaven. Miss Pippa will be like, sucker. Uh, yeah. Uh, you better not be in heaven. You guys got to stick around. Uh, I need you. I need the Pohazis. I need the Pips. I need the Van Zulans. I need Miss White. I need Angel. I need, listen, I need every single person. And you say, well, what do you need me for? First and foremost, I need you to hit your knees in the morning if you can, or go wherever you, lay down your bed or whatever you do, sit in your chair. Pray for me. Pray for me. More than anything I need from you, could you imagine God getting bombarded with prayers for Three Rivers Baptist Church and for its pastor. Um, prayer changes things. There's a lot to think about. There's a lot to chew on, so to speak, meditate on. Um, but I wanted to bring that. I had a whole nother message. Um, but I felt, man, today was a unique day. Um, I got to preach Jesus. Man, I was on one today, wasn't I? That was fun. Uh, this morning's message was just, it was absolutely, I had a great time preaching um, and uh, the devil tried ruining things several times in different situations, and we said, uh, sucker, and hit him right in his face. Uh, now, I don't know if we hit the devil, but we definitely got some demons, amen, uh, uh, some devils. But um, uh, today was a unique day, and I thought, hey, man, uh, I want to bring this tonight, maybe kind of bring it to light and say, hey, this is where we are. This is what's going on. I don't want to leave people in the dark. Um, and let you know, I still aspire to be full-time. Uh, each one of those pastors, Robin Smith, Bob Gray, Alan Domley, they said, Brother Jackson, you got to do whatever you got to do. 
but your church needs a full-time pastor. And I said, I know, but I kind of just need to hear you tell me, you know, Brother Jackson, quit your job and walk out on faith. You know, just, and I'm like, I can't do that. I've got a family to support. But God is methodical. God is working. I want you to know from your pastor that God is, is God's still working. Things are moving. And, um, but with proper planning, we can uh, expedite some of the things that are going on. I appreciate some of your all's input. I feel like everybody is behind this so far. Uh, I might bring it up again on s- next Sunday morning, possibly. Uh, but um, that's where we are. That's where I stand. Uh, and you say, what can I take from tonight? In closing, this is what you can take. You can take that your pastor's serious. Souls are the goal. Converts, conversions, that's what, souls are the goal. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. He, hand, he handed that off to us. I carry that ball. Souls is the goal. You have a pastor who's serious. But you can't take that, own, take that, take that verse and apply it to your life. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For him that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's not just going to reward your pastor. You know, we're all in this together. We'll all be rewarded together. Let's walk by faith. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the folks that are here. And Lord, what a unique, I feel like this is so unique, but it's exciting to say, what is God doing? God, what are you doing? And it, to be honest, Lord, <laughs> it's a bit frustrating. It's, 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 it is frustrating. To, man, God, what, what's going on? And I feel like I'm letting people down and people are, we're, we're coasting, we're at a stall. Lord, what do we do? And then in the right time, something is said. Something is stirred. And things begin to move again. Lord, I trust you. Uh, with all my heart, uh, help me not to help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, and we know that you'll direct our paths. Heavenly Father, I ask that you'd help us when, as we move forward. Uh, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I believe I am. Our church is ready. We're, I don't think there's anybody here who is like, no, let's just stay the way we are. This is comfortable. Let's not stir the pot. Everybody here wants to see people saved. Everybody here wants to see baptisms. Everybody here wants to rejoice over the blood of Jesus Christ and have kids run in the halls and the buses running in the morning. And we all want that. We desire that. Suffer the little ones to come to you. Lord, use us. Help us as we venture further. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.